Hey guys, it's Kate. I'm here with Morningstar Christian Bookstore, and today we're reviewing The Life-Giving Table by Sally Clarkson. It is such a great book, and it's about making every meal intentional with your family, whether it's a small meal or a big meal, but doing it with purpose and enjoying your company. She has recipes throughout this entire book, which I think is fantastic. And today we're gonna to be doing the recipe for lots of lemon and blueberry cake. And I have the ingredients in front of me, and let me tell you, it smells amazing already. I can't wait to get into it. We're gonna start with three cups of flour. The first ingredient to add to that is going to be one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, so mix that in. A quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda. My whisk. And then a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Get that all in there. And then you're going to just whisk it around, make sure everything is incorporated. And we're going to set that aside. On to the next ingredient. Okay, so our next ingredients are our wet ingredients. That's gonna be two sticks of butter and one cup and three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. We're gonna beat the butter until it is nice and smooth. Might take a while. But the butter is room temperature as it requests for it to be, so it shouldn't take as long as you might think. That seems pretty good to me. We'll stop it. And go ahead and add our sugar. And we're gonna cream that until it's well incorporated, nice and smooth, just like you're making cookies. Ooh, butter everywhere. And you're gonna to wanna to scrape the sides down so that you get every bit of all that butter and all that sugar in there. And once that is all incorporated, you're gonna be putting in four eggs, one at a time. And after each addition, beat it until it's nice and incorporated. You don't want any egg left over. All right, let that run for just a few minutes. I'm gonna stop to scrape down the sides because I see that there's a little bit of yolk sitting on the sides. All right, that seems pretty well incorporated now. So we're gonna add in our one cup of yogurt, half a cup of sour cream, five tablespoons of lemon juice, two 
teaspoons of um, vanilla extract and then two tablespoons of lemon zest. She did say lots of lemon and there's a lot of lemon in here so let's just go ahead and do this. I used um, low-fat yogurt. She didn't specify what, uh, what kind of yogurt to use, but just plain yogurt, not vanilla, not any other flavor. Mix that around just a little bit. with our sour cream. This is gonna make it nice and moist. For those of you who don't like sour cream, you can't taste it. Add the vanilla. Our lemon juice. And our lemon zest. that around. All right. So that is nice and incorporated. We're going to bring back our dry ingredients. So this, in the book, she says to add it in in thirds so that you don't have a big flour mess on your counter or on your floor. I would say about a cup and a half in each addition and then mix it so it's nice and incorporated between each. If you have a stand mixer, don't turn it on all the way. You'll get flour everywhere. Okay, next. Like I just did. Incorporate. And if need be, scrape down your sides again. it until you see no wet or no dry flour rather. All right, that looks good. And now you're going to add your blueberries in. I'm going to take this off so that we have an easier time of mixing them in. She suggests folding them in 
so that you don't break the blueberries and then get a mess of uh, blueberry juice in there. You want to keep your batter uh, nice and clean looking and I mean I would eat it still if it was blue but uh, it's fine by me if it's if it's marbled if you will. Okay so now we're going to add in our blueberries. Um, it's recommended that you toss your blueberries in uh, just a tablespoon of flour um, so they don't sink to the bottom of the bun pan when you go to, uh, to cook it. You don't want the blueberries in one area, you want them all incorporated so that every bite has, has a piece of blueberry in it. And you just toss them around until they're coated. That looks about right. Probably going to do it with two batches. Now you want to fold them in uh, nice and gently, again as to not break them. It smells so good. That looks pretty mixed. Now we're going to add it to our bunt pan. My bunt pan is non-stick, so I didn't need to add anything to it, but in her uh, book she does recommend that you do um, butter or a spray, like a cooking spray, and then put flour just along the edges so it doesn't stick. But like I said, mine is non-stick, so I didn't have to worry about that. Another thing, another tip that she gives is don't just pour it in because you might pop some more blueberries. So just spoon it in nice and evenly around. I already have a pop blueberry. It's fine. So I love lemons so, so, so much and a lot of the reason because of that is um, when I was pregnant for my daughter, my first daughter who will be six in December, my neighbor who happened to be my aunt um, gave me lemons because I was nauseous. She said it helped her with her pregnancy and let me tell you, there were numerous nights that I fell asleep with a cut lemon under my nose to help me get to sleep, to help me not be nauseous. It was a godsend. And I think this cake is also gonna be a godsend. So we're almost done putting it into the bun pan. So again, you want to evenly place it in the bowl so it doesn't have uh, high peaks and low valleys and so it will actually cook evenly. So give it a little bit of a jiggle so that it settles into all those pretty crevices in the bottom. Wipe any away that you might think would be uh, able to burn really quickly on the top. I could have eaten that, but I didn't. Who cares, raw egg is delicious. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna put it into the oven and bake it at 350 and uh, let it sit for, I think it was 50 to 60 minutes. Um, my oven, I think it was a little bit low, so I had to put it in for 65, but uh, it came out so beautiful. So I'm gonna put this in the oven now. Okay, 
it's done and it looks amazing it smells amazing and it's not even dressed to the nines like it's ready but it's not ready for like the gala and we're gonna get it there okay so what Sally recommends in the book is that you leave it in the bunt pan um, to cool for about 10 minutes just so that it can separate from the size of the pan if you have a round pan you can just take a butter knife and run it along the edges the outside and the inside and then um, turn it around keeping it in the pan but turn it around so that it's this orientation on a wire rack to cool but leaving it in there for another five minutes again to separate it um, and then it'll come out a lot easier so it's ready now and we're going to dress it with the glaze which I'm super excited about um, a couple of tips we're going to be using a couple of these lemons uh, set this aside for just a second so what I recommend doing when you need zest from a lemon is washing the lemons first because you don't know where they've been you don't know what you know pesticides and all that stuff have been on it um, so washing it anyway but using warm water that will actually loosen the juice up so that you get more out of your lemon and then also rolling it on a cutting board because that will also do the same thing by breaking up all those little capillaries in there you'll get much 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 more juice out of the lemon so roll it around a few times you can tell that it's getting softer and we need quite a bit of lemon juice for this so we're going to cut this in half I have my handy dandy lemon squeezer and throw one in there and just squeeze and we need about oh, about a half a cup if not a little bit um, a little bit more or a little bit less than that in there for the glaze make sure all the juice comes out of there There's side one. All right, so that is just under half a cup. I'm gonna do my other one just because I don't want it to be without flavor. I want as much of that lemon juice as I possibly can. Put this aside for just a second. Roll this one around. I used the zest of these two lemons for the actual cake, and now I'm just gonna use it for the juice. This one looks really juicy. Pop that open. like my mixer or my uh, squeezer, juicer. All right, so that seems like it will be enough lemon juice for that. I will leave that guy in there. All right, so we have about half a cup of lemon juice for that, and then we have half a cup of uh, confectioner sugar. So I'm going to put that and with that, and then a tablespoon of maple syrup. And then whisk that around. I think I might need a tad more confectioner sugar. It looks a little thin. We're winging it here, people. Take 
been a lot longer than I thought it would. Blender. And a lot more perfection of sugar. <laughs> this isn't a glaze, this is a we're gonna soak it. That's glazy enough. All right. Now we're gonna transfer our cake. That's better. That's more like a glaze. All right. Just for ease, I'm gonna pour it back into here. All right, now we're gonna just glaze it. Pour all over the sides. Missing any spots. I use a little bit. Okay. And now we're going to use these guys to get a little bit of a zest on top to garnish. A little box grater. Get some nice swirls. Being careful not to get your flesh. Definitely need more. And don't worry, these lemons won't go to waste. Sally talks a lot about how they have tea with every meal. And lemon goes really well in tea. 
so I think I might have a tea with my cake later on. All right, let's see what we have now. Yeah, that's better. All right, so now we're just gonna sprinkle it over the top. Blueberries. They're all in a roll. Let me see if I can place some. And how delicious does that look? I cannot wait to have a cup of tea and a piece of this lots of lemon blueberry cake. Yum.